Hey everyone, so today I want to take you through quite a typical Shopify development project. So this store sells fabrics and we need to show the exact fabric composition on the collection page here. So inside of the product card, we want to add some custom information. This information is going to be stored inside a meta object and we're going to edit the theme code to output that meta object right here, make it look nice and make it look like it's part of the theme. I say that this is a typical project because it's quite common that depending on the product you sell, there is some special, really important information that you want to show on the collection page so that a person doesn't need to click into the product to actually see that information. You know, maybe you sell car parts or something and you need to show some of the main specs right here uh, while, while a person's browsing lots of similar looking products, right? And they need to see that information immediately to be able to browse quickly. This is going to be a little bit more complicated than my typical videos where I show you how to use the custom liquid block for these little uh, straightforward snippets of code. You know, uh, this is going to be a more realistic project. So it's great for if you're learning Shopify development, but also I'll make it easy to follow if you're just a store owner with no coding experience. You should be able to follow if you're using one of these dawn based themes, right? One of the free themes from the Shopify theme store. And by the way, I should have mentioned this already, but the theme I'm working on today is going to be dawn. And I've simply made a, a duplicated copy of the live theme so that I can work on a preview of the theme and, you know, not break anything on the live theme. To be honest, this isn't the most realistic workflow either because on a professional project, I would be using VS code, but this is a simple enough project that I can, you know, show you everything inside of the Shopify code editor. So I'm going to close everything. I have deleted any code that I've written so far. So we're starting from scratch. So just duplicate your theme and open the code editor and we can start together. You'll also want to open the preview of the theme in the theme customizer and preview the theme in another tab um, so that you can actually see the front end of the website. Whenever you're writing code for a Shopify store or really just general web development, you want to choose a product that is going to be your testing product. So I'm going to focus on this pink one here. Let's look at the current situation. By default, we have these um, vendor names here. Koala Fabrics is the vendor. And we've discussed with the store owner already that this isn't very useful because Koala Fabrics is the vendor of literally every product on this store. So we don't really need to show the vendor. Um, instead, this would be a good place to put that fabric composition line. So then my task is simple. What I want to do is find in the code where this line is and I'm going to put my code directly after it. And I'm simply going to disable the display of the vendor using the theme settings. Dawn theme already has this setting where you can hide the vendor or show the vendor. And I'm actually going to do something similar for hiding and showing my uh, fabric composition meta field. So I happen to know that each card is contained in a file called card product liquid and I would immediately go into that file. But you guys don't know that yet. Right. Um, so let me show you the process of actually finding which code you want to work on. First of all, we know the template. This is the collection template. It's the default collection template. Um, and so that's going to be collection .json. That's going to show which sections have been added here and which settings you've made here. Okay. JSON files, they just store your settings. They don't store the actual code of your sections. They just store the settings you made in the sidebar here, but they give you the name of the sections that you've added. So we have main collection banner, collection banner, then we have a rich text, and then we have the product grid. What I'm looking for is this product grid section, what it's actually called inside of the theme code. So we've got main collection banner, rich text. Uh, this is all this entire block is just the settings for the rich text. You can see that because when I click here, the ending bracket is highlighted. And then next, we've got the product grid, right? And the type, this is the actual name of the liquid file that we're looking for main collection product grid dot liquid. That's what outputs this, this product grid, right? So next, I'm going to put that into the search and open up that file. And we're just going to kind of look through this. I'm not, I'm not going to read everything. I don't really care about everything. What I'm looking for is the loop, right? Because here we have like filters, right? I have the filters that that are at the top of the page, this stuff, the heading and everything, you know, and uh, I don't care about that. What I'm looking for is 
product grid container, product grid container um, for product in collection products. So this is where the loop starts for, for each product in collection products output this stuff. And here we have render card product. Whenever you see render in Shopify code, that means it's rendering a snippet, something from the snippets folder. Okay, snippets in Shopify can be rendered. They are usually used to create these repeating blocks. And this is just this is how we pass information into that card product snippet. So let's open up the card product snippet. And finally, the code that we're actually looking for will be inside of this card snippet. This card is just is just a single card, one product card like this, and it's being output repeatedly. You get what I'm saying, right? So here, I'm just going to command F and search for vendor. Because as I said before, we can just look for this vendor line, because I want to put my code directly underneath it. Let's look for vendor. And here we have diff class information, uh, card information, it's card information container, and if show vendor, right, remember this, this setting show vendor. So if show vendor, then it's going to display the vendor. Great. So basically, I can just put my code on the next line right underneath it. And guys here, I start like this all the time, I simply output some basic text, just to know that I'm editing the right place editing the right code, right? I'm just going to output test. And I should see that on the store. And that's why I'm not, you know, working on the live theme or anything. I want to see that right there. Yes, right for every product test, 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 test. So that tells me I found the right place in the code to put the code that I actually want. So now we can begin. So what, what do I want to do here? I want to output a meta field. So I guess we should create that meta field. Here I've got that product open, that one that is going to be my guinea pig product, the one I'm working on. And okay, I've already created my meta field. If you're not familiar with how to create meta fields, you want to go to settings, and then custom data, then go into products. And you're going to add a definition, add a new meta field, this meta field, you're going to call it, you know, fabric composition, in my case, or whatever you want it to be, you know, whatever spec you want it to be. And it's going to give you the namespace and key, this is important, we're going to be using this to output it in code, select the type, and it's just going to be a single line of text, and just one value, and you're going to save that. Okay. Remember the namespace and key. After you've done that, when you go back to your product and scroll to the bottom, you will see that meta field here, and you'll be able to fill it out as I've done here. That's all we're done with the meta field. So now we want to output that meta field, we're going to open up some curl double curly braces. And to access meta fields, we go product dot meta fields, I've shown this in many videos. And then that namespace and key dot custom dot fabric underscore composition. In my case, we're going to save that. And let's see what we actually output on the front end. So instead of test, we should have the fabric composition, except we don't. Why don't we? Well, let's have a look. How is this product outputting, for example, the title or the URL? Normally, to access, you know, the product title, we do something like product.title, right? But I don't see that in this in this file, I see something a little bit different. I see card underscore product dot title, I see card underscore product dot URL. And what's happened here is simply, they've renamed product to be card product. You don't really need to understand this part. Um, but basically, when they're rendering a snippet in dawn theme, um, they're taking the product and assigning it to card product. That's all we don't have to understand really why they did that. What that means for us is that instead of using product dot meta fields or product dot title, we now need to use card product card underscore product dot. And then it's everything is the same as before card product dot URL card product dot title card product dot price, right, you can access all of those product properties 
except this time using card underscore product whenever you're inside of this file. So now when I save, let's see what we actually get. That should be showing up now. And yes, it is it's showing up in our standard body text. Mm, doesn't look very good, doesn't really blend in. I want it to look exactly like this vendor, don't I? Let's try to inspect this vendor and see what's going on here with the CSS, what's making it look that way. So I'm going inside of card information. And then here is the vendor. As you can see, caption with letter spacing light. These are the classes that are on it. And these classes look like they're doing some styling. So we can check here what's going on here. So dot light, the class of light here is giving it an opacity of 70%. And the caption with letter spacing class just does those things right changes the letter spacing makes it a bit smaller so we actually want we want to use those same exact classes why not they're already built into the theme why would we write our own css when we can just use those existing classes so we're going to do exactly the same thing actually they're right here it's a div with the class caption with letter spacing and then light i'm just going to copy that and paste it and div and so now our Fabric composition line should look a lot better. When we refresh, there we go. There is just one small bit of styling that we still need to do. And that's because I noticed that when you turn off show vendor, that the spacing is too small. There's no margin between like the product title and our uh, fabric composition line here, whereas there is for the vendor. So what's happening here? Upon inspecting this a little bit further, we can see that there is actually more CSS being applied to this than just what's being added with the classes. We can see that everything in the card information div, everything inside of this div is getting a line height and color. And everything following the first child is getting a margin top of 0.5 rem. So what what that means is that basically when these are gone, and this is our first child, let me just delete them quickly, then we're not getting that margin top 0.5 rem. So I'm just gonna hard code that margin in um, so that we always have a margin top on this element, okay? So exactly as they have it, margin top 0.5 rem. Sorry, there's a point there. And this is just an inline style. I'm not gonna bother creating a separate CSS file just for such a small change. So when we save that, and we hide the vendor, there should now be enough spacing. So at this stage, are we finished? Is this all there is to this project? Well, no, not exactly. The first thing I would do typically is also add an if statement around this to make sure that it doesn't show up on other products where we have not filled the meta field. However, in Dawn theme here, I've noticed that when there's an empty div, it's automatically hidden. You see that div empty, display none. So I actually don't need to worry about that. But just in case, if you want to be safe, you can write it like this. If card.metafields, that's we're accessing that meta field exactly the same as we're using it to output it here, except it's in logic tags. If this meta field uh, does not equal blank, meaning it's filled out, then we're going to output this. Okay, and if, but if it's blank, it won't show anything. Okay, so you could do that. I'm personally not going to do that. But the next thing that I wanted to do is show you also how to add a setting, right? So I want to have this toggle, like show vendor, and also show fabric or hide fabric, or even better, we can take that a step further and have a, a text field here, which says, if you want to show a meta field, enter the namespace and key of the meta field that you want to show, right? And then this will be a multifunctional feature, right? You can show any meta field here. So it gives more power to the store owner. So let's do that. First of all, remember that we're in the product grid section. So I'm going to be adding those settings to the product grid section. So here I am in that section file, main collection product grid, that file where I showed you earlier, where the uh, card was being rendered, right? But the settings for that section are below inside the schema. And I'm going to search for show underscore vendor because that's the setting, that's the ID of the setting. And we're going to put our setting directly below. And it's going to be exactly the same for now. For now, I'll show you how to do a checkbox. So it's going to be show fabric. 
default is false. And here, we don't have a translation for it. I'm just going to write uh, show fabric. So there we go, there's our setting show fabric. And it won't do anything. Because we haven't actually, you know, we've created this checkbox here in the sidebar, but we haven't connected it to anything. The next thing that we need to do is we need to pass it into that render card product, we can do it exactly the same as show vendor. This is a big hint, you know, whenever you're writing code, you can just look at the way that the theme has been doing things so far, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You can just copy and paste. <laughs> so show fabric is going to be a new variable inside of this snippet. And it's going to contain the value of section settings show fabric. Okay, it's taking the value from this section dot settings dot show fabric, you know what we just wrote. And now that we've passed this to that card product snippet, we can use it inside our code. So exactly the same as here, if show vendor, if show fabric, okay, and if, and let's indent that so we can see that's inside. So now let's refresh the customizer and see if our setting works. And there we go, we already can't see our fabric here, because by default, it's false, it's unchecked. And now when we check it, we can see the fabric. That's good for showing and hiding something. But as I said, I want to take it to the next level. I want to make it so that the store owner can show any kind of meta field that they want. So we're going to rebuild this a little bit. And guys, this is what that looks like. So we have the namespace and key here. And if we had, for example, a, a different meta field like fabric color, then we could display that if we wanted to instead, I decided not to show you how I built this because this tutorial got way too long. It's honestly, it got a bit too complicated. And I've already shown you most of the concepts that I wanted to show you in this tutorial, which is creating uh, section settings, passing those settings through a uh, render into a snippet and then using them inside of a snippet. But don't worry, you'll find all of the finished code on my website. This is the code for the final feature with you know, being able to select any meta field that you want, just go to ed.codes and go to tutorials, or you'll find the link in the description of this video, actually. And last thing I want to say is that Koala Fabrics is actually one of my supporters on Patreon. So thank you for your support. Um, and this is actually what I do for my patrons. I help them with videos that they've requested, and I can show that on their store if they're okay with it, right. So if you're interested in being one of these stores that I would demonstrate on in a video, then check out my Patreon, you'll also find the link for that in the description. Lastly, please leave a like if you find this video useful. And I'll see you next time. Bye.